So uh, just before we get into today's review, um, I just wanted to say that uh, Saturday's review will be of Pain and Gain because uh, I'm actually a day ahead of everything else, or a day ahead of my review videos. So that's uh, working out, and uh, yeah, um, I as I said, I'm going to be bringing a review of this to the Fargo uh, review, but I guess this is, this, that'll be in the video before, so, uh... oh, sorry guys. Without further ado, uh, let's roll the intro and get into this review. So, Friday's review is of uh, Mad Max. Um, because I'm a day ahead, I already did the review of Fargo yesterday, and I am currently uploading my review of American Hustle which was Wednesday's review, but for some reason, before I left work last night, I was going to try to upload it from the program, but it didn't want to work, uh, and I didn't really want to try to upload it through the uh, YouTube the old-fashioned way, because, yeah, it just it takes takes longer to do it that way, and so it's actually uploading now. It's over 50% done. So uh, this, this movie was absolutely epic. Um, I did go to see this in theaters three years ago now, when it came out, and uh, I believe I went to see it the same night as my sister, actually. So we uh, were very close to the same night as my sister, anyway. Was it, it must, yeah, I think it was the same night, either that or it was like within the same week, something like that. Anyway, she had never seen the uh, older movies, so if you've never seen the old Mad Max movies, definitely go back and watch those because the story does make a little bit or uh, quite a bit more sense if you go gone back and seen those because there's a uh, stuff from the old movies that they've actually incorporated and thrown into these movies now I'm not sure where this one is supposed to fall in the timeline or whether it's supposed to be like a reboot but I don't I don't think it was supposed to be a reboot I think it's supposed to be like a new it's, it's somehow tied to the story I do believe and there is going to be a uh, another one uh as far as i know there's gonna at least i've looked it up on imbd and there should be another one coming soon um i'm not sure what year but we do have tom hardy to look forward to this year anyway because he's going to be in uh, the venom movie and uh i know a lot of people go to like uh, the sites and stuff and look up uh reviews of the movie and uh like ratings and uh Rotten Tomatoes has been one that's like definitely um, come out of the woodworks in the last few years, and uh, a lot of people won't watch movies if they rate it poorly. But uh, personally, I don't do that. Um, I like to watch the movie for myself, regardless of somebody else's opinion, because you don't know. Like they could think it was they could think it was the worst movie in the world, and you could think it's the best movie in the world. I mean, that's how debates start, right? Um, so this is a uh, in a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, after the world has fought for oil and basically all resources are starting to become scarce and there's hardly any uh, green life it's basically like the whole the whole planet is a desert wasteland and you have your uh, different towns so there was gas town um, and there were two two other towns oh I can't I'm trying to think of the name of the uh, Trying to think of the name of the the place. I guess it was just called the Citadel, basically. Um, that was like the main city um, where the water was kept and all of the other resources, like milk. And they actually use uh, instead of cows, they actually use women in this movie. So it's uh, like breast milk. So and they call it mother's milk in the movie. And, uh, so, Charlize Theron's character, whose name was Furiosa in the movie, um, is supposed to be going out on a supply run and decides to, uh, go off-road because she's actually taken, um, oh god, what was his name? She's taken, I'm trying to, th I can't. I know the one guy's name was Richter, but that's not the, uh, at least I don't think, no, it wasn't. Anyway, 
she takes the guys, um, the guy who is in control of the Citadel's wives, and he calls them breeders, basically, or his prize breeders, because he's trying to bring a child into the world to take over when he, he's dead and gone. So, she does that, and, uh, everybody basically turns on her, except for Max. But, uh, you don't find out his name until really late in the movie, and I'm not... I thought I thought the first time that he didn't actually tell his name till the very end, but then there's one scene where they find uh, where they think they found the the Greenland or Green Place, and uh, the one the one uh, um, prize breeder basically because I don't know I can't remember all the names says at least we'll be with Max, so I'm gonna have to actually. Uh, watch this movie again. Not that I'm going to be disappointed in that because it's a very uh, epic movie. Um, and just see where they actually, uh, where he actually officially says his name because I, it must be earlier in the movie. But I thought that was a, a big line in the movie, but I guess it's not quite as big as I uh, thought. Now I wouldn't, I don't know if this is the, the, the best action movie ever, but it's definitely one of the best. Um, probably, it was probably the best action movie of that year, in 2015, when it came out. Now, a lot of you probably don't know, but all of the music was done, uh, on one of the vehicles. So, that's why you only hear music when that vehicle is close. Because, there, yeah, there was no other source of music throughout the movie, except for that, um, vehicle that had the huge speakers on it, and the guitar, um, with the flamethrower on it. So, if you've seen the movie... You would know what I'm talking about, and it had like drums, a trombone, um, I guess there must have been a piano on there somewhere because I could hear somebody playing piano. It had a like plethora of instruments on it, it was insane. Um, also, something else you might not know is that uh, all the cars were built, they were real. Um, all of the, every explosion you saw, every crash you saw. Um, a lot of the stunts were real, uh, so, yeah, like, this, this movie definitely cost them a lot, because I did go and watch some of the special features, so, yeah, like, these, these actors went through a lot, the production crew went through a lot, the directors went through a lot, they s spent a good amount of time building and actually, like, like, making it seem like it was an actual wasteland. Now there wasn't there wasn't very much CGI because most of it was actually real. Um, there was a little bit of CGI to kind of make like the uh, the desert look darker and uh, a little bit more grim, I suppose. Like they did CGI a little bit, but I mean there was very little CGI actually done in this movie. Which is crazy because that that actually costs a, l a lot more to actually like do it from scratch, like not just CGI everything in. So I give them kudos for that because that makes a movie so much better when you just when you can actually you know stand behind it and be proud of it instead of just you know creating an anim animated character and you know just. Or animated vehicles because it would have it would have looked too fake um, for what it was and they were trying to basically take the angle from what I've seen in the special features they were taking the angle that even though um, the world had basically died off for the most part it doesn't mean that there can't be some pretty things left right uh, there was definitely lots of action in this movie um, when you first uh, when you're first introduced to Max at the beginning of the movie, it goes through all like the news clippings, and then he tells a little bit of his story about how he used to be a cop, and uh, now he's just um, only focused on one thing, and that's his own survival. But he does end up helping um, Furiosa and the uh, the other girls to get them to safety. But then. Um, once they've made it that far, they actually find out that they've caught, crossed the green place. Um, when they find the people they're looking for. And uh, so they 
decide that they're going to take a, I think it was a 160 day trip um, further east, but then Max realizes that there probably isn't anything further east, so he turns them back in the other direction, and they decide to go back to the Citadel, where they can actually, um, where there's crops and greenery and food and water and all that stuff. Um, I mean, they will have to still be careful because the, um, yeah, I suppose as it goes along, right, just the, they'd have to keep moving farther west, um, because eventually all that land is just going to dry up, right, because of storms and stuff. Um, the one scene that really stuck out is when she's, uh, in the big rig, um, I can't remember what she called the transport that she was in. Oh, the war machine, was it the war machine? Or war rig or something like that? Anyway, th this truck was insane. It was like, t I think there was two gas tanks or whatever on it. I'm a fuel tank. And like it was armed to the teeth with uh, turrets and... A whole bunch of other weapons that she had and she uh, had set it up so that it was kill switch so that only she knew the process to start the vehicle back up again so that was pretty cool um, but she does it um, show max so that um, when she's crossing through the canyon she thinks she's gonna have safe passage because she had made a deal with them that she would give them the one fuel tank or the smaller fuel tank in the back so that they could have fuel as well but then they uh, betray her because she said there would only be a few cars in pursuit, but there were actually three different uh, war parties coming after them. So they try to kill them as well, and then that's when everything turns south. So they're, basic, they're, they're on their own at that point in time. There's nobody there to protect them anymore. And, uh, yeah, the, a lot of the enemy vehicles were quite a bit more insane because I guess they're basically like out in the wasteland. They're not really in a city at all, so it's very, or town, I guess, so it's very hard to, uh, I think the other town was actually called Supp Supply Town, maybe, if I'm correct. Anyhow, the one, uh, I'm getting off track here, the one scene, I think, I believe they go into the Thunderdome, I believe that's what it was, that scene was crazy. I know that scene was probably a little bit CGI'd, but even even that, the uh, crashes were still real, so that's a pretty um, insane thing to do, to make everything real, except for, like, very, very little CGI is a pretty crazy thing to do for a movie nowadays. Um, there was a fight scene between uh, Furiosa and Max. Uh, 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 just after they exit the Thunderdome, I do believe, yeah. Um, and that was a pretty insane fight scene because it looked like at one point Max might actually end up getting shot. But uh, he decides to help them out. And uh, they do make it back to the Citadel and they do save the day. They do kill the guy who is in charge of the Citadel. So I'm really looking forward to another movie. Um, yeah, really looking forward to another movie. I would give this movie a six out of five because it definitely outdid itself. Like, just went into the just what went into this movie is crazy enough, and the characters played their parts really well. Now I'm not really sure. I know that um, the guys that follow the guy at the Citadel they kind of sprayed their mouths um, right before they were about to die to enter Valhalla. Now I'm not really sure why they why they did that it doesn't really ex explain now i'm not i can't remember if they did the same sort of thing in the old movies or not i have to actually go back and watch the old max map or mad max movies just to uh um relive those again and actually see what happens in those movies compared to this one but i'm trying to think of the names of or the what he called them Anyway, they normally just blew themselves up or tried to find a way to please their master, basically. 
before they uh, entered Valhalla. And that's because they believed that they could live once and die and then live again. And uh, one character in the movie has uh, cancer, actually. And uh, he has night terrors. So does Max, though, because uh, at some point in time he's left certain people to die. And he has to live with that because he was focused more on his survival than their survival. Um, so, yeah, the fight scene was pretty insane between them. And uh, I don't think there was any other, like, big fight scenes except for one between Richter and Max. But that didn't last nearly as long. And, uh, yeah, I would say that's pretty much all there is to say about this movie. I've actually gone on for 15 minutes and I'm not really surprised just because of what this movie was. I'm not really sure if there's anything, like, cool on the inside or not. Cover-wise... No, the DVD looks the same. There is actually, however, a uh, video game for this as well. So uh, if you haven't, uh, I definitely want to get it because it is out for Xbox One. So I uh, will probably get that game and maybe do some uh, gaming footage of it and uh, possibly like a walkthrough. Try to do a walkthrough of it um, on this channel just because this is supposed to be... Uh, partially a gaming channel as well, uh, but my other channel is just going to be all DIYs, so I might do that in the future as well. Um, I'm definitely going to have to watch this movie again because it's such a good movie. And uh, this is probably a long enough review, so this is where I will leave off the review, and I will see you guys on Saturday with a review of Pain and Gain. Bye-bye for now.